Grinders, welcome back. It's your boy Pokewinger back on the grind. Guys, today I have something a little different for, for you guys. Last night there was no spin and go action, so I decided to jump into a tournament. It's called the Winner Series. I've been jumping in tournaments just before late registration since the Ontario site here and there. Kind of just late at night when I uh, don't have action, I still want to grind. So I saw some good value in a tournament last night. So I decided to jump into a tournament and we're going to do a quick little recap. I'm going to go kind of fast. Um, I wanted to show you guys, oh right here, if you look at this, it's a little blurry, but I had a massive chip lead, a 2-1 to one chip lead with um, 15 players left. First place was just under $2,000 plus bounties, um, so it was a $200 buy-in. I joined in with about 20 minutes left before registration, and then I lost a flip, and then I joined with one minute left in registration, literally one minute left for late registration. They put me in with 15 big blinds, and I was able to uh, plug along and, and kind of build a stack. So I just wanted to show, just kind of show you guys this. Um, I got about uh, one at right about here. This, I, I know I flopped something good. Okay, this is a hand I wanted to show you guys because it was kind of a key spot. Okay, so if you can see, I have a massive chip lead. So I was playing aggressive, started stealing a lot of blinds and all that. So I have pocket aces, obviously, the dream dream hand. So I'm limping under position. And guys, we are right. We just made the money. We literally just made the money. Um, oh, I should go full screen for you guys. Sorry about that. How do you go full screen? Probably this. There we go. So I have pocket aces. I go for a standard three bet. I, I don't mind my... Uh, oh, but even before I say all this, guys... As you know, I don't play tournaments all the time, so my bet sizing and stuff like this will be a little off. But I do want to say, I do have money in my account, as you guys know. So I wasn't playing just to like ladder up. I was definitely trying to gun for the win. Because I'm only playing tournaments here and there, I'm not trying to min cash. Um, so there is some ICM spots that I'm not worried about because I'm, I'm trying to gun for that top two, three uh, kind of spot. So keep that in consideration. And I openly tell you, I'm not, I'm not a great tournament player. But uh, I do, I definitely don't mind uh, playing, and I, and I do have some experience in it. Um, here we go for a really small C bet, which I expect him to float often. Um, here with his stack, guys, if you look at this, very, very scary board. He could have us beat with a set. He shouldn't have too many nines in his range. We block ace nine suited. What nines are really going to call us pre flop? So you got to always think about that, right? So y y it looks like two scary cards. But we like it's going to be so hard for him to have ace nine in that spot and in early position and all that. He's just not going to have it. I'm more worried about pocket queens, pocket jacks. Uh, he could have ace queen, ace uh, jack. I'm I'm looking for to get kings. But this is the type of board that I really want him. He's not going to have ten kings suited in those kind of hands. But it's a hand I definitely want him to to chase if he wants to chase. Um, and I think a lot of times. We're, we're going to get kings to call. I'm just really hoping it's not jacks jacks or queens. Sometimes pocket 10s, pocket 8s. But for him to uh, float on that board makes me suggest that he doesn't have the overpair. Because I think they would have re-raised me. Here he calls with pocket 10s, guys. And we, lo we lose a massive flip. Oh, as you can see. Oh, so I should have muted this because I was watching why I wasn't recording and talking last night. Um, I'm going to skip through this was I was watching the Mr. Olympia. I'm a big bodybuilding fan. Um, I'm going to skip through some spots because I didn't have time to edit this and show you guys a really nice sample. I'm not a, a massive streamer here. Here I'm going for pure value town. This guy was actually a solid player. Just got very lucky versus me. Um, here I'm going to show you a key spot here. I'm going to get out of this video. So here we're, we're 10 people, we're one off from the final table, I got pocket tens. I started watching the um, the second table because we're just about to be the final table. Here I'm showing you guys the bounties here. That I, You really want to go after the bounties if you can. I don't know how to do full screen. I'm sorry about this setup. Or well, maybe this is full screen. So pocket tens, I definitely want to isolate the, the guy limping in here right beside me here. So with our huge chip stack, we're going to be always, I was doing a lot of raising, a lot of stealing, building my chip stack. Um, this is where no one wants to mess with uh, when you have like a two to one chip lead. I kept bullying people, kept doing little min raises. Uh, when I started off short stack, it just shows you how much your stack is av available. I only had 15, 20 big blinds. I was folding every single hand. And then as I started building up hands, uh, building up my stack, I was able to jump in a lot of pots, right? 
So here, just standard C bet, going to represent like ace king, uh, Broadway hands, king queen suited, and stuff like that. Hands that I would be three betting with, and just want him to. He that guy was in second to you know top top five place. It looks like he doesn't want to gamble too much against the chip leader. Um, it's just my thought. Um, I want to skip though to the kind of the final table here. I know I'm going really fast, you guys. So here is the final. I I did. I think I played pretty well. If you look at, if you want to pause and look at this, I still had the chip lead. I'm, I'm one of nine. And some shacks, stacks are getting pretty solid. Now, my second place guy here, okay? This guy was crazy. He's what makes Ontario players look bad. He chased every single bounty. <clears throat> I was extremely happy that he was a guy with a lot of chips. Um, he wanted to gamble left, right, and center. My dream was to play him heads up. That was the goal after seeing him play. We're going to skip to this other video here, guys, because I, I got a couple of them here. So nothing really happens to that one. We're going to jump to this video here. Sorry if I was a good YouTuber. I would, uh, I'm would. i still one of nine here. Pocket threes. Now, if you do look at this, some guys would call here. 20 big blinds. I have 125 pocket threes. But you got to think, he's not going to punt this off, right? He's got a guy low, lower stack than him. One guy even in chips. He's not punting, right? So what's his range there? I'm praying for like ace king, ace queen suited. But majority of the time, you're going to be crushed. And I, then there's a chance if I call 20 big blinds here or come over top, I have someone right beside me with 60 big blinds. If he wakes up with a hand, I'm in deep trouble. So I actually just snap folded pocket threes. Um, and I do think it's the right play. On, uh, we don't get a call there, but here we have King Jack. We got a min raise. I could go for a three bet, but I just, in, in position here, I want to see flops and, and put people in hard spots. King Jack. We have middle pair here. Now, when the original Razor here, if, if, if he checks it, um, they will they will do a delayed a delayed bet with aces because there's so many multi-way people in the pot depending on his strength um, But we do have position and a lot of chips and the we block ace king block ace jack These guys behind us if they were super strong, they'd be three betting. They did not three bet So I'm just doing a little stab there and I'm really only worried about the original razor He could be slow playing and we do take it down. That's just the power of chips and position so I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. Okay, we have ace-queen under the gun here. I go for a raise. I started increasing my raise size because of the antis in the middle and because of my chip stack. When I was sh short in, in chips, I was only min-raising. But as my stack got bigger, I started bowling people around a little bit. I really just want to steal a lot of pots. And if I can get for a flip for some of these bounties, um, that's what I was kind of looking for, right? So this guy uh, up here, he had nine big blinds. If he would have jammed here, you know, let's say it's pocket sevens, pocket eights, you're kind of in a flip. Not the best flop here, but I love that I had the, uh, the ace of hearts. But I think it's a board. I do not want to get check raised. If they have like ace nine, king nine, stuff like that, we do wake up with the ace. I was debating here bet size. They know I'm always going to bet this ace, but because there's like the straight combinations uh, and we, we do block the nut flush draw, I did size this up here. If he's going to chase, I want him to pay for it. But to be honest, me betting here, um, looking at this, like if he jams me, what do I do? I have top pair queen kicker, but it, it is a scary board. Like if he jams, I'm pretty sure I have to fold him knowing I'm going to bet that ace. Um, he doesn't want to punt it off. He's against a chip leader. I have the chips to call. Um, you got to think of these stuff too of like, he's not putting me in a hard spot with the amount of chips I have essentially. If I make that call, I'm still in first place if I lose it. So people aren't going to bluff as often in those scenarios um, because, and they're just not going to punt it off, right? So you got to think of these spots where it looks like you're strong, but what's the likelihood of them just uh, doing a check raise semi bluff? To, to me, it's not the type of position like we're on a final table he's kind of mid position like so when people put in these you know these certain all-ins you don't need a hero call as as often ace four here really there wasn't too much going on i wish i could show you this guy this guy's lost half his stack um i just really want to kind of skim through this I'm, I'm pretty busy today and obviously if i was legit i would have put this all in one video for you guys and edited it but uh we're not going to do that. So here, I, blind versus, oh no, I was late position here. Look at my bet sizing. Real, real, real tiny. So I have the king of diamonds, guys. Extremely important. 
Oh, what I should have told you is before this hand, I got caught with a bluff with a huge overbet pot. So it was literally almost the next hand or the hand after. So they caught me betting over pot with a bluff. And you always got to be mindful of what people are seeing you do, right? So I have that in the back of my mind. Here I'm trying to do a pot control bet, just a blocker bet. So now we get the backdoor draw. So he, obviously he can have us beat, but we have the nut flush draw. He could have ace three in his range, um, but we want to go for the goods. Um, I think if I just jam it, we're not going to get too many uh, calls unless we're probably beat because the queen and diamonds isn't going to call for a jam. So we go for an over bet pot knowing that everyone just saw me do a bluff like that. Plus, a lot of these guys are reg tournament players. They don't know who I am. But I don't play tournaments. So um, I thought it was a good to be kind of like um, taking these spots, right? So we get a hero call from him. Definitely like the way I played that hand. Not just resort orientated. Um, I, I knew that I could be a chance I was behind. If he jammed me there, you know, with jamming there without the king of diamonds, I think majority of the time you're going to be, um, you're going to be behind because... They're not going to just re-raise you in that spot, risking his whole tournament with the, with the second flush draw. I almost think with me betting over pot there, if he goes all in, he's just never bluffing. It's it's, it's going to be a full house, like pocket, a set of threes, ace three, one of the ace combinations. Here we have pocket queens. We go for a standard three bet. I definitely wasn't shy with three betting. And guys, I'm playing without a HUD. Since I've had a new computer for two plus months, all my spin and go wins and all this, I haven't even loaded Poker Tracker. Um, if I was a tournament player, this is where I really think HUDs are important. But for spin and goes, I really don't care. It's just to show people graphs and all that. I've, I've played for years. Um, there is some advantages, don't get me wrong, but uh, I've been successful without it and I, I don't mind doing it. Here, I'm just really trying to play my stack, trying to do these little stabs here keep trying to keep my uh my chip lead um let's try to find another spot here here i raised pre-flop an ace comes so we know it's a scare card i have backdoor club draw i sized up the my bet because of the ace i do get a call here Here, it sucked that I couldn't uh, see a card, but we're obviously never going to call. I don't think he's bluffing ever, and um, I'm not going to chase that much just for a bounty and a flush. And if we did hit the flush, who says we even have the best flush? He could easily have ace-king suited there with the clubs. and uh, Sorry, ace suited there with the with the clubs and had uh, you know two pair plus the, the nut flush draw or something. You don't know. So Jack King here, this guy here in the top, the very top, he just does not fold at all. So for me to three bet with a mediocre hand here, you want to three bet when spots where they're going to be folding pre-flop and all that or premium hands that I can outplay them post-flop. But against a really crazy player who's just not going to, if I go 10 big blinds, he's never going to fold. So against another player in that situation with my chip lead and all that, King Jack is a good, very good hand to three bet with all the blockers. You block so many combinations that hands can call you. Here, because... I did not respect this player. I know if I hit, I can get rewarded. I definitely wanted to float with two overcards in the backdoor flush draw. I just really wanted to play this guy as many pots as I could. Obviously, there's risk in that because we're the top two people. I'm risking, I could have just kind of floated and, and not battled against him and played it very, very safe. But like I've said, guys, we have a lot of money in our account. We've been doing well. I'm not trying to min cash. I've played tournaments before when I was like terrified on a final table to get into a hand. I uh, just trying to move up in spots. Um, that's not what I was going for, for here. I was like, we don't play tournaments often. If we're going to play, we're, we're going to play, right? That was the, the mindset. Um, there's a couple other key spots here. King nine suited. We raise. As you can see, I was. Uh, this is under the gun here. This guy just. I happen to get a lot of my good hands under the gun, which isn't the best spot to be raising. But don't forget, this is short handed. This is six people, right? So if this is a full table, king nine suited, uh, chip lead, I probably. Or, or a lot of chips, I probably still raise. But if you're kind of all even in chips and it's a full table and you're under the gun, king nine suited, it's not a hand you're going to raise with. Um, you're just not going to do it, right? Especially the lower your stack gets. If you have like 25, 30 big blinds, you're not going to raise with that hand. Okay, we're going to... Video's taking a little longer than I wanted, so... Because um, I was going to maybe try to squeeze in a spin. Let's... Pocket Queen's there. I didn't get any action. 
pocket nines here. I did bet that flop. I don't remember what happens here. I actually, yeah, I think my nines are good here, looking at that. Yeah, king eight, yeah, that made sense. Okay, I'm gonna end this video. We got one more to go, guys. Okay, we are four of five now, and I was one of nine, so tournaments is gonna happen. I lost some 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 key hands. This guy here, I don't know if I showed it. Look at oh he yeah, this guy, this guy here hit a two outer army. We went he had 20 big blinds. Blind versus blind. I went all in with pocket queens. He had pocket fives and he hit a five on us. That would have gave us a massive chip lead plus his hundred dollar bounty. So I was pretty crushed about that. And then on that board there, I was showing you guys we had him dominated on the turn there, uh, and and we didn't hold up there. He we we had him. Um, me and this guy were talking. He was a bad player, so I was I was trying to just keep him entertained, keep him talking. There's some strategy in that, right? Sometimes I don't talk to anyone. And then sometimes I want to get certain people engaged. Uh, Got to think of it. If you, if they're not a, they're just looking to have a good time, and you want them to keep playing. Like some poker players take it so serious, they don't want to talk. Like you see these guys live, they have a Turbo Max Arn, and you want to make it fun for the average people, right? So this guy's playing his Saturday night, having a good time. He could be a regular player. I, I have no idea. See his pocket tens there, meaning he's played a million hands. But with the way he was playing and and talking stuff like that, like uh, I wanted to keep him keep him engaged and and uh wanting to play ace king here i don't remember what happened so let's watch this obviously we're gonna go for a three bet here now the bet size is something like i like i said i'm not an expert in spins because my shot my stack is getting smaller i don't want to uh see bet usually as big we still go for just over 3x which probably is pretty close to standard because of the antis in the middle if there was no antis i would just probably stick to to going to a 3x here is not the best flop whatsoever, but we can represent an overpair. And you got to think he's not going to hit that board too, too often. And because we're three betting, we have so many um, overpairs in our range. And um, I want him to think that, right? So here is uh, not the best card to be bluffing with. So we're going to pocket troll it. Now, don't forget, he's going to have seven eights in his hands. He could just be floating with any other Broadway. So here, you got to think of my range. It looks like I'm capped because uh overpair was still bet and he had the overpair so he had pocket jacks so we are four or five hunting around the bottom and like i said i've been trying to jump in these tournaments just before registration closes because i don't want to be grinding this this had like three hours before late registration closed I do not have the time to play three hours of that, plus uh, the how long the tournament takes. Like I can't be grinding six, seven hours at a time. My grind sessions are usually one to two hours max, and then uh, I'm usually done for the evening. Or if I'm playing on a weekend, I'll play an hour here, and then later in the day I play an hour in here. But um, I don't have the time to play six, eight hours. I do think there's extreme value in these tournaments. But I would not recommend just joining a minute before registration. I'd want to, you know, play those weaker players and build up a stack. Ace King here. I want to look. Um, I don't want to play that hand out of position. You probably could go for a small three bet, but I also want to make it look like I had pocket sixes, pocket fives, so like a weak hand, so I can get some ace jacks, ace queens, and maybe king queen, thinking they're flipping. Um, that's kind of the spot. But I, I didn't want to do a small three bet and have to fold just with our chip stack. So I just went all in there. So look at the bounty on the big button here. This guy has $448 bounty on his head. So I have Jack Queen here. I have the chip leader beside us is going to constantly put us in uh, bad positions. But don't forget, I did want to isolate the bad player. Plus, he had the biggest bounty on his head. So if I can get the chip leader not seeing a flop or just happen to you know call and see che cheap flops, I was really just trying to... This this red player that I have tagged, if he if he hit a pair of twos on the flop, he's not going to fold. So if we get anything, I was just looking to to play a flop versus him and just put him all in, knowing he's not going to fold too often. Let's speed this up a little bit. We have pocket twos. This guy just got lucky again. Oh, he got the massive bounty. Um, this guy was running. He was running so pure. Not saying he's a bad player, but um, anytime he 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 took he gave me two big bad beats. Um, he anything 
he won about six all-ins that he shouldn't have won. So uh, that's what it takes in tournaments, though, right? You gotta you gotta run you gotta run hot, and you gotta have hands when other people have hands. Uh, you know, it's just part of winning tournaments. I've won tournaments where you know I definitely shouldn't even been on the final table, and then the final table you played great, but you gotta remember middle of the tournament you had like pocket jacks versus pocket aces, and you, and you hit an ace, right? So this guy was just taking out everyone. We're down to three people here. I was observing him knowing he was playing a stack. He's going to keep putting so much pressure on us. There was a $600 um, pay jump from second to third. But my thought was, guys, I do not want to just jump for $600. Yes, I could have just kind of stood out of the way and, and see if I can get just float my way to second place. I, I'm gunning for that first place, right? I did not. Now, if we had a small bankroll and I was like doing a bankroll challenge, and uh, six hundred dollars was a huge, huge milestone in the in the account building it. But because we have the room to play here, um, I I wanted to go for that, right? So here I was tanking, thinking his range here, and um, I decided to go for a flip because it's second and, and third. And we do land the ten here, so we do win a flip, and he's down to five big blinds. Okay. Now this is where the chip leader is going to be putting a lot of pressure on me because that guy's almost blinded out. So in this spot here, even though I don't want to, I want to go for first place. This guy's down to four big blinds. I do not want to be playing uh, any pots versus the chip leader, right? You know, if I have pocket aces and it comes like ten, nine, eight, and he's got two pair and I can't fold, right? So here, unfortunately, the little stack does triple up. I could have won $600 just from, from him uh, getting out there. Ace-King here versus the chip leader. This is very risky, guys. Now, this is an ICM pump punt just to go all in versus him if he wakes up with King's Aces. But um, I, like I said, there were still spots I didn't want to gamble, but also I didn't want to just like totally put my tail between my legs. Here, I'm looking to isolate the, the uh, short stacked. I'm hoping he goes all in. He does not. This is not the best flop. I'm regretting what I did here. I think I should have checked back with the backdoor flush draw. And he's going to be hitting that, calling my raise. I, I did for a small little stab here. But I, I and then look at this. Like So I put myself in a bad position. Um, I folded here. I don't I don't know what the best is looking this. But I just really regret my C-bet. I definitely should have took a free turn card. Him calling our, our you know our flop uh, our, our raise pre flop he's going to be all over that that board here. All in again versus the chip leader. This guy has a massive chip lead. A seven versus ace eight. Unfortunately for us guys, it looks like ace eight. Oh, they they chopped it there. Ace five here. Now I do that same little stab, hoping he comes over top of us. He's got a bit more chips. He does not. But that was another scenario where I'm trying to think what they just saw. They saw me feel like I was weak betting one. So now that I had a piece of the pie, I did the same bet size, hoping he would do the same result. Here, I definitely don't want to be gambling too, too much versus the chip leader. But we're, we're seeing flops, but treading with caution. If he bet pot here, like we're not getting crazy creative, right? Um, I did call here with back uh, backdoor inside straight draws. Back uh, ace high is still going to be good on this board, um, but it's one of those things. Am I pumped that I have an ace here? It's very very risky, right? He's got such a dominant chip lead on me. He can just put me in in horrible scenarios. I'm really surprised he didn't bet that eight. Just putting our max leverage on me. Um, we do take it down. So he had five, we got the turn there. Okay, I want to speed this up, guys. Let's go to... Okay, this is this is the hand, guys. I didn't know this was the hand. Let's watch this. Okay, I defend with 9-6 suited with the same thought process that I'm trying to tread lightly. But uh, I am defending, Okay. It's going to be hard for him to have a queen with this. And I'm not going to say he doesn't, but sometimes it, it will be hard. We expect him to see bet with his entire range. 2-7 offsuit to ace-king to pocket queens. He's going to see bet that every single time with his chip lead. Um, I guess sometimes if he's like queen-nine, maybe he's trying to um, 
make me, make me think he missed. So I guess maybe not 100% of his range, but a big chunk of his range is going to see bet. So with us middle pair, um, this is where it gets interesting here. And this is my mindset of understanding tournaments a little bit, okay? He has to put pressure on me because it's an ICM pump for me me to gamble against. This guy's short, short stacked. It's a 600 pay jump, but he doesn't know that I'm playing for the win, right? So him sizing this up, my thought is how many queens do that? Like, right? I don't know how many queens are just going to bet that because of the flush draws. And I'm thinking his draws could do that. A semi bluff, 10 jack suited, club draws, spade draws. But how many queens do that? So I'm like, you know what? And if he has kings or aces, he's afraid of a queen. So I'm really thinking this is leaning more on a draw. That's how I was putting myself in this spot. And he's trying to use his chip stacks because it's an ICM pump to gamble. And by me not raising him, it really, really looks like I'm on a draw. So that that's what was going through my head. By If I went all in, then maybe it looks like I have a, a, a nine or a queen. But I was like, I want him to think that I am just searching for a flush draw, open end or something. So I'm kind of tanking. I was kind of doing the same uh, betting uh, betting timing timing tail. So here's an ace here. Very, very, very scary card. But this is what's going to go through my head, okay? I know he's going to bet this ace a lot of the times. I check. He puts me in a horrible spot here. I think he puts me all in. And I want to tell you what's going through my head here. Okay, his bet size on the turn. Does ace-queen do that? I don't think ace-queen does that bet size on the turn too often. Uh, King-queen, like I just, that bet size was so polarizing. It, it made me overthink this spot. And if he was betting this board the entire time, okay, let's say he doesn't have a queen. How many aces does he have for this whole thing? He could have uh, ace suited for club clubs and spades. And then now he has top pair. But I think if he, if he's betting an ace here, he's terrified of the queen. So I literally was thinking he, there's zero chance he's an ace in his range because I don't think an ace puts me all in. I just I just don't. Because if I missed my draw, I can't call anyways. So the hands I can call would be um, a queen majority of the time, right? That This is what I was going through my head. And like I said, I, I'm not a tournament player. And I was just thinking he thinks it's an ICM pump and I cannot call unless I'm super, super strong. And most queens would have raised them the whole time because they're afraid of a bad beat. This was all going through my head that he has to put on pressure on me. He knows how to play his stack. He, he can't put pressure against the low stack. He can put pressure against the second place. So I was considering all these spots that it's an ICM uh, spot to put leverage on. And I decided to make the hero call here. Uh, I really, really tanked, really, really thought about it. But I just was, I do understand tournaments. I do understand um, things are supposed to be doing. And uh, I just, to me, I disguised my hand that... Um, I decided to make the call, and he did have the queen. So kudos to him. He did get very, very lucky. Um, he won the tournament right after this, guys. Um, but this guy ran like a god. But look at this, guys. We want to pause and look at that. It was a $200 buy-in. Now, I bought in twice. So it was we won $1,371 plus $162 in bounties. Um, but we, we paid $400, right? So roughly, we made $1,000 in that tournament. So I'm going to show you guys the quick new bankroll. Stay connected here. Um, spinning goes um, here's the new bankroll guys we're at twenty one thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars I do want to show you one thing before I let you guys go there is a new promotion on poker stars not for spin and go players um, just for overall players um, it's called Broadway here somehow you play you only get one card a day but as you unlock these during these next 24 days you'll get random prizes so we have a chance of winning you know whatever fr from this um, but uh, hopefully during the next couple of videos, I can show you guys what kind of chests we unlocked. As you guys can see, we still have a lot of chests up here. I downgraded my my black chest um, just based on my schedule. Um, but I'll show you guys this, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Um, but we will open up these eventually. But we got, as you see here, diamond chests, black chests, whole, whole bunch of chests to open up uh, one day in the future. So I'll leave you, leave you guys on that one. Let me know how you thought about the tournaments. I don't plan to play too many, but if I see spots in the middle of the night, uh, I was staying up late for the Mr. Olympia, so I will jump in tournaments the odd time, but uh, I may, obviously you guys know I mainly do spin and goes. So hope you guys like the, the little mix-up, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.